Welcome back everybody. Hi Tech Lab here. Got a few packages in from the Electric Car Parts Company. We're going to be opening those bad boys up today. This is part of the lithium ion upgrade here in the off-grid electrical room. We have a nice anti-static bag here, um, or at least not anti-static, but these just do not build up static. That's what these pink ones are. But inside of that uh, anti-static bag, or static resistant bag, whatever you may want to call it, is a true anti-static bag. And in here is my balancing board. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tape. And this is my first time opening it, so I haven't cheated or anything. Here is my battery balancing system. So here you go, here is the battery balancer. As you can see here, there is terminals labeled B1 through B8, as you can see. And then I have one terminal here and one terminal here. These are the uh, terminals that allow you to link two of these together. So this would connect to eight cells of a series battery bank and it'll, it'll actually transfer power between the cells. So the way it does that is, if cell eight has excess power, it'll pull off cell eight and pull it onto this DC bus. Um, this, this is, I believe, a pulsed DC signal. And then any batteries that have a lower voltage will then pull off that pulsed DC signal on this bus. So what that allows you to do is I can open up this second one right here. All I have to do is run some jumpers from this one to the other one, and that'll tie these DC buses together. And now I have effectively a 16 cell battery balancer that won't actually uh, get rid of any power or dissipate any power. It'll just transfer between all the cells. The cool part about this style of balancer that differs from many other balancers is you don't actually have to have all these batteries in series. They can be parallel connected, in any way connected, and as long as they share the common DC bus, they'll all balance out together. I'm going to be installing these boards in this enclosure right here. So there's a pretty good chance I'll figure out some sort of standoff and mount them like such, one on one side and one on the other. Depending on how much space I have, it looks like I should have enough room. Uh, or I can mount them like this and have all the wires in the middle. And then what I'm gonna do from there is I have this Panduit wire way at the bottom I'll drill holes in the bottom of it and just stub them out and have them all right here uh, where my lithium battery bank is going to be sitting. So here we are. I've got some cardboard to protect the top of the batteries. I've got a couple of pieces of seal tight half inch ran. Um, all my 14 gauge wire, they're all equal length. And then if you look over here, I have my balancing boards. I went ahead and I have the wires all in here. I went ahead and drilled four holes for the corners and I made these stack ups. These are all from Ace Hardware, just nylon spacers. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick those in the holes and level that guy out. Go ahead and put the nuts on the bottom now I went ahead and put this on the bottom of this cabinet simply for the fact that I wanted to keep this back plane clear so if I want to add more current sensors or other devices I have space in this cabinet to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and get these wires all put on the balancers and, and hooked all up and then I'll be back. Okay so here we are on the drill press I have a 5 64th drill bit getting chucked up. Uh, this is my chuck wrench by the way I took the chuck key and welded it into a extra crescent wrench. And the nice part is when you're tightening down, you can hook two wrenches together to get that extra torque on there. Uh, this is not really needed for this case, but sometimes when you're using those larger drill bits, they like to spin in the chuck. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my bus bar, and now what I'm doing is I'm drilling this out for the balance leads. So I'm going right about center, about an eighth to a quarter inch of space, you should use a drill press vise when you're doing this kind of thing. I don't have one that'll work with these, these thin bus bars. Um, they would just crush them. So I just have a piece of square tube so I don't drill into my drill press table. 
I'm set right now on the second pulley position, which is right about 2100 RPM, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill this bad boy out. So now we have a hole for our balance leads. We're good to go back into the electrical room. So I've actually moved ahead quite a bit. I got all the balance leads in. Uh, I have these little ring terminals on here and the tiny 632 um, bolts and nuts. So all these balance leads go back through into the balancers in the control cabinet with the wires all equal length. And not only did I crimp these terminals, but I also went ahead and soldered them to get uh, especially good connection. The way this is set up, here's our battery negative, and we swing around through here, snaking back and forth through all the cells, and then come back down through, and that's how we were able to pull off right here, positive and negative at the center, uh, just like I had planned on. And the reason that's nice is, I'm like I said in the other clips, I'm right here at my bus bars, ready uh, with a short piece of wire connected on, ready to go uh, tied in with the rest of the system. So I'm gonna do a voltage reading. By the way, we're charging now at right about 40 amps, uh, which is quite a bit. So our terminal voltage, and it's dropping, uh, I think that depends on how what the load was, and I think the sun peaked out. Right now we're at 54.4 volts across the bank and slowly rising. My first cell voltage here is 3.388, second cell 3.389, third cell 3.4, fourth cell is 3.404, fifth cell is 3.397, sixth cell 3.396, seventh cell is 3.392, Eighth cell is 3.408. Ninth cell, 3.399. Ninth, or I think that's the tenth cell, 3.406. Then we have 3.403. And then we have 3.411. And then we have 3.396. And then we have 3.412, and then we have 3.396, and then the 16th cell, we have 3.418, back to the first cell, 3.392. And the reason I measured the first cell again is because since we're charging at 39 amps, uh, the system voltage can go up. Oh, let me do this again too. Um, the overall terminal voltage uh, 54.52. So it's good when you do your voltage readings between the cells to jump back to your first one, especially when you're not just at a resting stage. And that's important because as these are charging up, their voltages are rising. So it's good just for your accuracy of your test. Whatever the variance was on the first cell between your first test and your second test, that's your accuracy rating of your test. So if this goes up, 0 0.002 volts, you know your test is accurate, plus or minus 0 0.002 volts. Anyway guys, thank you guys for watching the video, supporting the channel. There's tons and tons of new content coming. I've just scratched the surface of these lithium batteries, and I'm still learning a lot about them, but I will do videos on all the voltages and set points and, and all the technical aspects of those batteries. But for now, I'm gonna take off. I'll see you guys in the next video. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment any questions below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, bye.